welcome back to another Supercoach video with me, JD. You're joining me for the round 16 review where Supercoach has just fixed up its scores. There was an issue at first open on lockout uh, where some of the emergencies for some teams weren't being counted, which did a whole bunch of funny things. So if you haven't looked since it opened, you might want to check just to make sure that you have the correct rank. Um, for me, I scored a 25.82, which moved me up 42 spots to just outside the 200, which is not too bad given that I'm still holding Oliver. Um, the trades for the week were, in the end, Mitchell and Johnson on for Fletcher and Doherty. Uh, and I thought, you know, just between Malikin and Fletcher, I could hopefully get a good enough score to cover Oliver for the week. And I did with a Malikin 85, which is pretty handy. Now we're just hoping that Oliver comes back. Uh, so we're at that weird point of the year for Supercoach where there's really not too much to go in terms of trades and it's more just around, well, if there's injuries or any issues or if there's any must trade outs, um, that we, we talk about those. Uh, but I'll quickly go through the team and then talk for those that do have um, uh, final upgrades to do who I'd be looking to go for. I'll probably pick at least one in each line. Uh, and then we'll do some vice captain, captain thoughts and close it out from there. So if you do have any questions, of course, hit me up in the below because it's at the point in the year where it's very team specific now. So um, if you do have stuff that you're wondering about, please let me know. Um, so in terms of the defense, the defenders all did really well this week. I mean, I can't complain about any of them. Dawson had a terrible ratio, did much better in fantasy than super coach, but Stuart and Dacos were huge. Sinclair did a great job to work through early attention um, to... Uh, score really well, it was quite clutch for them late in that game. And I thought Doherty looked pretty good playing loose behind the ball. I could have scored a bit more, but hey, um, um, for what, 530 or 40K, whatever I paid for him, 108, I'm very happy with. And a much better defender option than, you know, like the Lloyds or the Wangan and or whatever that some other people are running. Um, so hopefully continue to gain ground on that each week. And then Melikan um, was very solid with the 85 and I can loophole him again this Friday or this Thursday night against the Tigers, which is good. Um, and given the Tigers have been struggling with their tall forward targets as a chance, maybe Melikan goes okay again. We'll see. Um, moving day into defense, it actually makes it much more disappointing. I, I do remember that now. Uh, yeah, very poor game where... Oh, similar role to last week, but he just didn't convert on it um, nearly as well. De definitely a bit of a down game. And then um, his ball use wasn't particularly great. So uh, penalized pretty heavily from um, champion data for that as well. So yeah, that's that's disappointing. And one that I would love to move on to Sicily when he's back, but it's probably just not going to happen. I mean, you take the good and the bad though, right? It was 140, whatever it was last week. 140, 65, average goes out, it's 100. That's all right. Just need another 160 this week, maybe, Will Day. Go on, please. Um, midfield, the midfield stepped up pretty big this week. I think the only one that I didn't have, which was um, pretty annoying, was Sarong, who was up in the 130s. I mean, Crouch did really well as well for those that have him, but um, not my type of player from anyone on the Discord watching will, uh, will know that after my carry-on on the weekend. He's hurting me from a fantasy perspective, so yeah, very upset about that. But um. Merritt, I think, was a top scorer for Supercoach this week and was very good in that game. Just couldn't get the team over the line, but he was brilliant. His kicking was great. Um, defensive efforts were really nice. Uh, Bont was good. Um, and after the 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 um, VCs missed on uh, Dunkley, which is where a lot of people were, uh, I got asked the Bont led question a lot and Bont was kind of where I went and uh, you got an extra 30 points doing that which is great obviously there were some other really good options as well but that's probably where I would have gone I did actually consider Petrarca earlier on last week and I if I had to say on him I'd be so frustrated right now because this 128 was good but it could have been much better he, he went 0-4 um led just so so I mean I think keys in the midfield might be hurting him a bit I don't know um I'm a little bit worried about led and I think he's probably relegated from like, I'll just never give him captaincy over Dawson, I think, at this point from here to the end of the year. Dawson just gets a lot of the cheap stuff through the middle. Led has to do a lot more to get his points. So, um, yeah, don't love that. Brayshaw, yeah, down game. That's That sucks. That sucks. Um, I mean, this happens with Brayshaw. He's, he has ups and downs. Back at Optus this week against the Blue, so he could score right there. Green was very good in the wet. Definitely conditions suited him. Uh, and then Oliver, we're looking to hopefully rejoin the squad this week. Fingers crossed against the Saints. I think that'd be a pretty decent matchup. Has he got recent history against them? Oh, 130 is in the last each of those last three games. So yes, Oliver, please come back and give me 130. I am ever so deserving of this. 
Um, the Rucks were good this week. Um, Briggs was obviously the one that people have been using as a bit of a bet against um, English and Marshall. And I think he scored okay, 87. I want to say he had like a free kick against late, which probably hurt his score. Otherwise, it could have been a low ton, even though he started slowly. I think he was on maybe 10 or 11 at quarter time and still managed to get um, 90 or like 80 points over the last three quarters. So uh, yeah, he's he continues to be an all right option. Hopefully... English puts 30 points um, a week or 40 points this week a, a week on him. That's my hope as a non-owner. Um, and then in the forward line, yeah, most all fine. Um, Cogs was wasteful. Uh, this is for Toronto's first down week in a while. Dunkley, the 107, despite being subbed, which was very unlucky for owners. Um, cop that uh, uh, calf corky. They said it's precautionary. We'll see how he progresses this week um, as to whether that's a problem or not. And then DCAM was the disappointing one, just the 61, despite um, Pies well and truly getting on top of Gold Coast. I know Wits is a tough matchup, but yeah, that's a very disappointing score, e- even considering those situation, uh, that situation with, with Darcy Cameron. Um, so in this situation, three trades left. I am not moving on anyone, even a Will Day or a Tarsi Cameron that are scoring 65 and 61. Very disappointing. For those that are now in the position to have a 23rd primo, such as a Himmelberg, hopefully you can put him to use um, and loop him around some of these other disappointing options. With Day, it's not going to work because they play each other this week, but I guess you could with uh, Cameron. So you could put Cameron on the bench with the emergency, have Himmelberg there and kind of move him around based on that. So, yep, um, that sucks, but... You know, when you start picking up these cheap options like Day and Cameron, sometimes you get cheap scores. So uh, who would I rather have? Oh, I'd rather have Butters instead of Cameron. And then I think I'd be happy with that. Although I don't really love Cogs. Um, and then in defense, I'd rather have Sisley, obviously, but he's not back. Uh, and then I'm, I'm stoked with my midfield, to be honest. Like, yeah, I don't think I'd really change anyone there. Um, okay, so if you're looking for trade-ins this week, uh, who would it be? So in defense, um, I think these first five here, Dacos, Stewart, Dawson, Sinclair, Doherty, uh, top five plus Sicily. So they're the only six that I'd be looking to upgrade to. Um, if you're desperate for a cheaper option, I guess you could look at like a Himmelberg or something like that. I assume he's still um, uh, cheap, 405k. So yeah, Himmelberg's a cheap option and I'm probably going to say ditto for the forward line. Although where's Keys at? Is he in the 500s now? Yeah, it's a shame. He's 500. Um, so yeah, Himmelberg's probably the cheap option for both those lines. Um, for the mids, as I said, I'm really happy with these eight mids. So I think you go any of these plus Sarong. Um, Parrish would be the the point of difference option or Kelly would be, but they've both got injury concerns over them. And then if you're looking for the cheap one, I think it has to be Mills um, just because he's 404k, which is ridiculously priced. Uh, Steel's cheap at 440 as well. So I think you could still look at both of those. But um, yeah, with Warner out, depending on how long he's out for, Mills, I guess, is um, maybe preferred if he's getting CBAs again. Uh, for the Rucks, I mean, if if you are upgrading, I think it's to English Marshall or maybe Darcy. Darcy probably can outscore Marshall from here, but uh, like uh, it'd be a weird situation if you've got like English and need to upgrade here and you don't. Yeah, anyway, um, but yeah, yeah, I think that's that's fine. And then in the forwards, I, yeah, I already mentioned it. It's like. Dunkley, Taranto, Goulden, Rosie, Butters are my top five. And then the sixth, I'm not really sure. Oh, the other mid I missed was Libba. So if you want Libba, that's fine. Uh, I think he had like 10 minutes on the bench in the end of that game. Though, so I'm not sure if they're resting him or what's going on. Like if he's actually carrying something, he just hasn't been t- covered much. But that's the only um, flag on Libba. But he's obviously scoring very well. And I think we'll continue to do so. Uh downgrade targets this week i have not even considered it to be perfectly honest eliza hewitt was good cunningham was good is he um still on the bubble yep oh he, he scored a 97 so i guess you could look at cunningham um as a mid forward option probably should have earned himself a little bit of uh, uh job security now hewitt 161 case so i think that's another one you could look at um as a if you want playing downgrade options otherwise you're probably just going to loopholes uh, let's just check there wasn't anyone else cheap that played that actually scored well Oh, Marich, um, yeah, he had a good game. It's surprising how like competitive West Coast were. Williams, I guess, is the other one if you want to play in Ruck. Um, Chess, are you probably not touching? Oh, O'Donnell moved to defense, so probably holds that spot a little while just given their injuries, but uh, 128K defender. I guess if you're looking for a defender downgrade, then O'Donnell's probably it. I think that's a, about everything in terms of uh, just like broad advice. Uh, Vice captain, captain this week. A little bit tricky to look at. I mean, you could look at um someone like Goulden against uh, Taranto, like against the Tigers. He's been in what good form these last few weeks. It's not loading. 
Is Supercoach still bugged? Maybe. Have a look. It was working just before, though. All right, there we go. Loaded. Uh, so three-round average of 133 for Goulden, including what, 164 and 124 in the last two weeks, and then 111 before that, which isn't a terrible score either. History against uh, Richmond isn't good, but of course he hasn't been playing this role, although he was playing it in uh, round five. So, um, yep, yeah, I guess that's one you could look at. Uh, this matchup, I think the Pies have been giving up points to Rucks. So um, English is probably a consideration, maybe more so than Bont in this matchup. Yeah, maybe you could look at English, which is one we haven't done in a little while. Let's hold it there. Um, Lions against West Coast. So this is interesting. I, I would imagine there's a risk Dunkley gets rested again. Um, so maybe Neil could be the one that you look at in this matchup against West Coast, who are obviously very friendly uh, for mids. And what Neil's had two 140s in his last three now. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm liking Neil as a vice captain option and he's got good history against West Coast. Ooh, that's nice. Um. GWS Hawks, like, I, I don't think you can trust Green or Kelly or anything like that, so I'd probably avoid this game. Um, St. Kilda, Melbourne, I, I don't know what um, Petrarca's history is like against them. Not great. I was going to say, like, if there's no Oliver, I think Petrarca maybe is a consideration. If there's Oliver, can you go him captain straight up? Probably not. So, that you know, they might rest him if Ds get on top or whatever it may be. So, yeah, probably avoid there. Port, Gold Coast, I don't think I touch anyone from that matchup. Um, Geelong North, no one there for me. Essendon Adelaide, uh, what Merritt? I don't know what his track record like is like against the Crows. Oh, it's good. All right. I mean, yeah, that that looks pretty good. Um, uh, Merritt's been obviously all right for him. So what's one you could consider? Um, I assume Lead's history is not bad against us either. Oh, it's not loading. Excellent. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess you consider like Dawson Laird. And Merritt all from this game. I mean, probably not Laird, as I mentioned, even though he's uh, scored well on us last year. Yeah, I mean, if I'm if I'm going any of these, uh, it's probably Dawson or Merritt, and maybe Merritt just given form. Uh, but I'd probably stay away from this game. And then Fremantle, Carlton in the last. Could you go like a Brayshaw or a Sarong? Uh, I don't know. Blues haven't been the easiest to score on this year, so I'm probably avoiding this matchup as well. Maybe a Sarong type would go okay. Uh, so for me, I'm probably looking at English into Neil at the moment, which I don't love Neil as a captain. I'd rather have him as a vice captain, to be honest. So maybe I set my threshold for what I'd take as a captain score a little bit lower this week. Geelong's uh, like Stewart's got North. I think the problem is he like it's just not great to score against defenders. Like like this could be really one sided, and Stewart gets nothing. So I don't think I'd go there. It would be a more interesting as a vice captain option. All right, I've got English into Neil this week. I think that's where my starting spot will be. Uh, I can loop Melikin. If you've got Sheldrick, he's been amazing. And with Warner out, she could continue to get CBA. So you could loop him as well and the same thing, see what he score he gets and just put him on your weakest line. Like if you're, if you're looping a Sheldrick with a Cameron this week, that would be pretty good. Um, Fletcher, I'll loop in the middle as well. And he's probably likely to be, well, like Mel one of Melican or Fletcher will cover Oliver this week if he misses. And that's part of the reason why I was looking at, um, uh, Fletcher as an option, just because I thought I can, um, then once again, look at these two. Um, and then depending on how they score, um, if Oliver's out, take one of their scores. So I had two weeks of loopholes across them, just have to kind of cobble, cobble my scoring together until Oliver comes back. Uh, hopefully Davey comes back this week. He was good in the twos. I don't know if he was good enough to actually get a spot back. Um, cause I, I didn't think the smalls to Essendon played particularly poorly this week or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much everything for the week. We just hold the trades from here on out unless we get injuries. Um, I don't think I'll be in a position to upgrade like a day to Sicily. If it was in one trade, uh, next week I would look at it, but, um, given it's going to be two for me, I probably just can't be doing that at this time of the year. So I will sign out at this point. As always, if you've got any questions, hit me up below. Otherwise let's keep moving up the ranks and hopefully I can get a two digit finish this year. That would be uh, pretty exciting for me. So yep. Uh, thanks for viewing as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.